Welcome to Women on the Rise with host Patricia King and Michelle Burkett. Hello, Women on the Rise. I'm so glad that you've made the choice to be with us today. And I say choice because today, Patricia, we're talking about choices and where we make choices that sometimes are, that put us on a really good path and sometimes mm -hmm. not so much. Mm -hmm. I know I've made some pretty disastrous choices in my life, but since I've known the Lord, they're getting better and better and better. But um, it is true, like if you make a disastrous choice, you are putting yourself on a path for a disastrous life. Yeah. If you make a real healthy choice, a wise mm -hmm. choice, it's going to change. It's going to change your path. It's going to change the way your life um, is determined. So it's so important. We were talking before the program about how uh, prior to knowing Jesus, I made some horrible choices, um, choices uh, uh, on a day by day basis that kind of put me into a really hard place. I won't go into all the details of those uh, because those of course are all under the blood and which is one beautiful thing about knowing the Lord. But then um, I got to a place because of all those choices going bad. Mm -hmm. I was depressed. I was searching for answers. Mm -hmm. I thought I need something to get me out of this, this hole that I'm in. And so someone came to me and said, hey, I've got a great opportunity for you. Um, you know, I belong to a new age community. Uh, you know, why don't you engage in that? And I thought, oh, okay, maybe that will, will be what I need. And so I made a choice to step into that. Little did I know that by stepping into that one thing, and it was just having an astrology chart read, that it was going to be the open door to lead me into any, many other dark things that brought me to my death store. I was so demonized. I was so dark. I was on my, literally on my deathbed and my life was being taken from me. That's when the Lord intervened, praise the Lord at that point. But I can tell from the time I started making those small dark choices, mm -hmm. it opened up to the bigger dark choice until I was completely demonized really. Wow. And, um, Disastrous and then sure. I made a yeah. supreme choice yeah. and that choice was for Jesus Christ he came into my life and started restoring everything that had been broken but if I hadn't made all those dark choices first mm -hmm. I wouldn't have had to go through everything I went through mm -hmm. but when we choose Jesus it's it's just I mean he is he is the only choice really right. and um, I was looking at uh, Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19 he, he says um, I've set before you life and death so that's a choice, right? We're going to go to the things that bring us life or death. I've set before you blessing and curse. Mm -hmm. And then he says, so choose life. Yeah. Choose life. Make right. the right choices. Right. And, you know, I've just shared some, you know, pretty big choices. I mean, it's a big choice to step into some, you know, real dark places in the occult and stuff. Um, but even little choices that we make on an everyday basis, like sometimes it can be as simple as choosing to eat the wrong food or, you know, and so it upsets our stomach mm -hmm. or, um, you know, gives us a headache or whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of little choices that we make every day that we have to watch over. Mm -hmm. I just did that the other day, actually. I, I saw this really neat product advertised on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, wow, that would be so great to help in the summertime. And, and at the same time, I had this little place in me of, uh, maybe, maybe this isn't a real deal. And so I, I actually invested in the product and then the add-on and then the warranty, oh, no. right? It just got worse and worse. <laughs> so anyway. One choice after another. Right. Once so you get on that path. the big box <laughs> came and I opened it up and took one of them out and I'm like, Oh no, this was not the right choice. And it, you know, I, I've been able to recoup some of the money that I spent, but not all of it. Mm -hmm. And so, okay, lesson learned. Right. Right. But um, in that, I don't continue to go back to that company and continue to. Um, give them money for things right when it's junk right you know and there's a lot of times in our in our lives where we're making choices that are actually feeding and giving money to junk 
And I'm not talking about just monetary money. I'm talking about the things that we're investing yeah. in that are actually junk and they, they don't carve out the right realm yeah. in our lives. Yeah. And the choices that we make, I've seen in the spirit where they absolutely carve out a realm and you are choosing mm -hmm. the realm that you want to have carved out in the spirit mm -hmm. by the choices that we make. Mm -hmm. And I, I love in, um, in Joshua where it's talking about Joshua, you, you tell the people they can choose to go by the gods that are of their fathers, uh -huh. uh, which would be our family line, what's just always been, what we've learned through experience of our families, uh, or you can make choices based on where you live, which at that time was the Amorites, they were in Amorite territory, and God was saying, you can choose to make choices on what your family's done or what the world is doing around you. And that is still our choice mm -hmm. today. But there is a realm that is carved out where God says he will give you everything that you put your foot on if you choose him mm -hmm. above everything else. And when you're doing that, it's carving out, like I said, that realm. But how I've seen it is uh, like a, um, a sculptor. It, and and we, we are this you know, piece of marble, but we're, we're looking at our father and we're wanting to be just like him. So we're looking at him and the choices that we make are tap, 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 allowing some things in us to go ahead and be carved mm -hmm. out so that so we're good. looking more and more and more like our father mm -hmm. according to our choices. And if we keep making choices that are world-based, right. comfort-based, um, any other plumb line other than looking at my father God, right. those are going to be the things that get chipped out that I begin to take on the characteristics of and look like. Right. And that's disastrous. Yeah, and we can make a disastrous choice or we can make a brilliant choice, right? Yeah, right. So it's like when we look in the book of Genesis, <laughs> you know, we don't go too far right. into, into the Bible before we see a disastrous <laughs> yeah, choice, right? That's for sure. Unfortunately, that disastrous choice didn't just affect Adam and Eve. It affected it's all generations. mankind. And we yeah, have to realize that, right. that the choices we make, they don't just affect us, mm -hmm. but they affect everyone around us, mm -hmm. oftentimes um, many people, yeah. okay? So we always want to make the right choice, but imagine what it would be like. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you make a disastrous choice, like you were talking about your little purchase <laughs> that you made, right? right? You got it, and it's like, oh, and it yeah. makes you feel so horrible. I, yep. It causes reaction that are negative. I, mm -hmm. It puts more work it, it um, sure in did. your day to fix it all up yeah. and everything. It like more and more. It gives birth to more and more frustration. Mm -hmm. So that's the realm mm -hmm. kind of that gets carved that's out really with that. Good, yeah. But on the yeah. other side, with a brilliant choice, right. Right? right? With a brilliant choice that you make in a day, it does the exact opposite. Right. You know, it just makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. It energizes you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it makes you feel good about yourself. Right. It helps you to make others feel better. And, um, and we all have the capacity to mm -hmm. make brilliant choices. Mm -hmm. We never have to make a disastrous choice. Right. We never have That's to. Right. If we do, though, praise the Lord, there's redemption. We can hit a reset. There is redemption yeah. through Jesus Christ. We yeah. can hit the reset. Yeah. But, um, but we don't have to. We can make brilliant choices. And so when you wake up in a day and say, you know what? Today's going to be a day of brilliant choice. So let's say we look at our breakfast options as our first choice for the day. And we think, oh, I could have a plate <laughs> of donuts. <laughs> or I could have a bit of fresh fruit yeah. and a nice egg or something. Yeah. And we think, oh, I could make a disastrous choice. Which Patricia, would... I don't want to talk about food choices. <laughs> <laughs> or I can make a good choice. But yeah, sure. anyways, we might That's struggle. Exactly when right. we see that plate of donuts there, yeah. we might really want the donut. But when we make the right choice, doesn't it make you feel good? It think, really does. Yes. Yeah. I made a brilliant choice. And yeah. your body feels better. Yeah. And you just feel good internally for making a right choice. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, our whole life is like that. And especially with Bible teachings, when we, like, I remember when I got born again, I was reading my Bible. And I thought, wow. And the Bible, even in the New Testament, is full of thou shalt and thou shalt nots, right? right? And I remember reading it and saying, oh my goodness, this is so good. God wants us to do this. I'm going to do it. And it made me feel so good. And that's not legalism. That's just 
Kingdom. aligning your choice yeah. with God's choice and it would feel so good yeah. and it would produce right fruit. Mm -hmm. Anytime I have chosen contrary to God's will, mm -hmm. I've always been sorry for it mm -hmm. because it's a disastrous choice. It's, mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's no other outcome to a disastrous choice except disaster, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. It's just the way it goes. But when you make the right choices, you fulfill destiny, you feel mm -hmm. good, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you don't see the consequence of the choice right away, Right. okay? Sometimes it's, 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 it's later, but it will come, right. Right? right? It'll eventually come. Yeah, you, I, can, I can smoke a pack of cigarettes and it doesn't kill me right then. Right. But if I continue to go down that way, I mean, uh, you know, you talk about being just one degree off yeah. on a compass and where that will take you down the line is so, so far, far afield mm -hmm. from where you want it to go. And sometimes, too, we begin to normalize our bad choices. Right. You know, and so say this is where we're supposed to be and we make a choice and we're living in it for a while here until it becomes our, our new normal place and then there's another choice and we continue to kind of move off that place that is the healthy the right yeah. the the pure place the place that says um <clears throat> that is living from the place of purity before the lord and saying uh you're my father you're my lord be lord of my life and sometimes we can find ourselves way over here and we're like we don't even see right. what this anymore and this has just become uh, what we have rationalized uh, in our choices mm -hmm. that this is where <clears throat> excuse me is okay now yeah and we can't we cannot live like that no. we cannot live making choices that are based on just what makes me feel good in a moment uh, or you know even when someone comes at me in a certain way I have a choice right then on how to respond right you know um, the things that that are the choices that I make again that just are what my father looks yeah. like and the plumb line for good choices is found in the word yeah, absolutely the word the Bible is like your your handbook for life right and it's got so many good things it's got wisdom in it and and it'll teach you how to live well it's, it's just an amazing um, gift that God has given us is the scriptures. They were inspired uh, by the Holy Spirit. Um, Paul taught Timothy that. He said they're, they're, they're inspired by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus you made, made reference to the scriptures. And Michelle, we're living in a day where that's being challenged. The scriptures are being challenged. We're hearing so much now of people saying, oh yeah, the, the scriptures aren't really um, valid for today. They, they, they don't even relate well for today. And you know, you just make up your own truth sort of thing. And that's a bad choice, by the way, if that's you believe in that, that, <laughs> that lie, that is a bad choice. And yeah. um, I had someone just recently you know, share with me a belief system that's going on out there is saying that um, God would never ever um, put someone in eternal torment and so therefore that can't be true because it doesn't fit my emotions so they're making a choice not only to believe that there is no e eternal torment but um, uh, to also twist the word of God to say what they want it to say and um, disastrous it is disastrous right and so they were saying like the word eternal doesn't really mean eternal it actually means it's 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 era defined or confined and it just refers to a certain portion of time um, but I mean if you start yes, an eternal portion of time yeah, and if you start <laughs> If you start doing that on Where eternal torment, you have to do it for eternal life too. Mm -hmm. Well, are we only saved for a certain portion mm -hmm. of time? Mm -hmm. And is God himself not really eternal? Is he just around for a That's certain right. portion of time? Right. I mean, it is ridiculous. Now so far be careful field. what you yeah. choose to believe. And even people, you know, that are saying, well, you know, God wouldn't do this or God wouldn't do that. I think sometimes their perspective is wrong. Like we've got a choice of what we're going to believe because there's God's kingdom, which is pure atmosphere of love, purity. There's nothing defiling on the inside, nothing that would ever hurt a person or put anyone in bondage. But he made only one way into that kingdom, yes. one way. It's through Jesus, Jesus Christ. There is no right. other way. Even though you might want other ways to work, they're not going to work because God said there's only one choice to make, and that's for Jesus. Right. But when you choose him, then you get entrance into this beautiful 
kingdom. There's no other way. But everything else is outside the kingdom. So we have a choice. We're going to get what's in. the kingdom which is this beautiful life or what's outside the kingdom which is going to be basically torment but it's us who chooses that's right it's not that god chooses to throw someone it's the last thing someone he wants to, do. to eternal torment it's it's people choose what's outside of what god has prepared for us which is his bountiful atmosphere of love and his kingdom and its glory that's what he's prepared for everyone so um, it's you know we can't misrepresent God. We have to choose right. well. And by the way, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior yet, choose Him. Make a good Call choice. Call on Him. Make a good choice. <laughs> you know, don't go sort out all these other ways. Yeah. Just choose Him. He said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. Mm -hmm. No man comes to the Father but by Me." We have a beautiful guest today. Her name is Wendy Walters, and she's going to talk to us about the power of choice. And one of the things that Wendy is pretty well known for is um, she names her day. Yeah, I love that. And so at the top of the day, she will name her day. And then throughout the day, she's making, she's framed it. That those right. are the things she's looking for and that she is choosing in that mm -hmm. day. I, re I remember when I first heard her teach on that. I was so excited. And in, in fact, I'm just getting refreshed again. Yeah. I should start naming my day again. <laughs> but you would name it saying, okay, God, wh what, mm -hmm. what can we partner with to call this this day? Mm -hmm. And it might have been like victory, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So then you say, okay, I call this this day victory. Yeah. And then all day long, right. you're, you're just focused on the victory. You and you're, your focus. Yes, victory, and you're looking right. for the testimonies that yeah. he's going to give you of victory. It was so cool. But she's also known for helping people find their purpose. Yes. And she's going to explain to us how even finding your purpose, and many of you might think, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm on this planet mm -hmm. for. And um, you all have a purpose, a beautiful purpose, but it's, it's, it's going to be you choosing mm -hmm. things that will lead you into your purpose or will enhance your purpose. So she explains that really good. to us. Yeah. Okay. Here's Wendy Walters. Greetings. Hi there. Thank you to Patricia and to Michelle. Thank you for inviting me to share with the powerful women on the rise. Um, it's my pleasure and delight to just speak with you for just a moment today about the power of choice. Now listen, choice is an amazing thing. And its origin is all the way back to the Garden of Eden, where God gave them a choice whether or not they were going to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil or not. Choice began right there. It's been with us since the beginning. The power of choice. Free will. It's an, it's an absolute gift of God to us. Um, and it's something that's difficult to wrap our heads around because sometimes your free will bumps into me and I get hurt. Sometimes I suffer consequences that I didn't do anything wrong and because somebody else acted up. I got to walk through some hard things. And sometimes my free will bumps into you and, and you get hurt or offended or have to walk through some things that had nothing to do with any action you've taken. So free will is kind of a hard thing. Choice is kind of a hard thing. And, and so I've learned that I can choose my way out of everything I've chosen my way into. Uh, we get to choose. I get to choose every day what I think. I get to choose what my thoughts are. Um, many of you, uh, you've connected with me because of I, I, I name the day and I don't post it every day anymore because that's that's wearisome. Um, I post it often. I name the day every morning I get up and I name the day. I choose what the name of this day is. And because I've set that name in front of me, 
it sort of begins to attract things about that name. So whatever it is I've named the day, it has it has set my awareness because I've chosen to set my awareness on whatever I've named the day. And so I naturally begin to bump into those things as a course. Um, I just finished interviewing a man who uh, was down for 10 months with Lyme disease, literally so much brain fog, so much fatigue, he could not function, almost lost his business, had uh, repercussions to his family. And he got to the point where he said, no, I choose vibrant health. He realized he was every day making the choice to be sick, that his whole identity got wrapped around that Lyme disease. And he began to choose vibrant health. And it, literally he started in 10 minute increments of a day. I'm going to choose for 10 minutes. I'm gonna engage my brain and engage my body and begin to act healthy for 10 minutes until he built it up. It took him months to build up from that. And then, you know, just doing things he chose to put in the right supplements and he chose to have purified, clean alkaline water. He made choices all along the way. He chose his way out of a circumstance he did not choose his way into. So we get to choose what we think. We get to choose our actions. We get to choose our responses. And, and listen, no matter what you're going through, um, you know, I hear people often in my consulting, well, I didn't have any choice. I had no other choice. And that is a convenient and comfortable response. And I do have compassion. Sometimes we, we have gotten to a spot where we didn't have great choices, but we always have a choice. There is no such thing. Even not choosing is a choice. Um, you know, death and life are in the power of our tongue, what we choose to say, what we choose to agree with. My mentor, Clarice Fluid, I hear her every day in my head, who will agree with God? You know, the kingdom of God is voice activated. And the things that I say become my reality. The things that I think become the things that I say. The things that I say become the things that I do. And the things that I do become my world, my atmosphere, all as a series of choices. So listen, I was created for purpose. I don't get trapped in this uh, pursuit of success. I, don't, I wasn't, I'm not here for success. I was here. I was put here with a purpose. God gave me a purpose. And my resiliency to hard things is built every time I give myself over to something that's bigger than me. I choose to connect to what God has for me. I choose to connect to, to what's going on in my family. I choose to connect to what's going on in my church and in my community and with the people I've aligned myself with. Every time I choose things bigger than me, my choices get easier. When I focus on myself, even, listen, this is hard because I love helping people find their passion. I love it. But I am not passion driven. My passions do not drive me. My purpose drives me. My passions might give me some breadcrumbs, some clue to what my purpose is, but it's my purpose that drives me. My choices are driven by my purpose. Even what I take into my body, feeding, feeding my body with food as fuel, not as, as fog eating or storm eating or just pleasure eating, although it can be pleasurable. But even what I put into my body, the, the pure water that I drink, getting up and walking around when I've got a 12 hour day at my desk, movement. These things are choices because I have a purpose. I have something I've been put here on this earth to do. And my choices are either going to limit that identity or release that identity. And so I'm, I'm choosing every day to become more and more who it is that God called me to be. You know, many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. I am here to do good works that the father placed beforehand. I get to choose that. So today, I just want to encourage you, listen, consumer Christianity does not work. It simply does not work. What works is I choose to seek God's kingdom first. Whenever I seek first the kingdom, the other stuff takes care of itself. I get to choose. So God, I choose you. Every day, I choose joy. I choose contentment. I choose peace. I choose love. I choose to value people who have different values than me. I choose to bring value to people and add value to people who do not value me, who do not share my values. I choose. It's powerful. If you will just begin to say, I have choice, I get to choose, and then decide, I choose, and fill that in. Write that down. I, I have a journal right here, still, still on my desk. I, I spend time every day writing down affirmations, what I've chosen today, who I am. I choose to be healthy. I choose to be vibrant. I choose to be strong. I choose to be resilient.
hello to my puppy in the background. I just want to encourage you, ladies, wherever you're at, you have the power of choice. Whatever situation you find yourself in, you can choose your way out of. So I just want to encourage you today, grab a hold of that. It's a gift of God. Free will is a gift from the Father. He's given it to us and he expects us to use it in a way that answers his call to step into our purpose and be everything that he's granted us to be. You have a wonderful day. God bless. Wendy, thank you so much for sharing with us on the on choices today. And I love that idea about the journal of where you choose and then you fill in the blank of what you choose and that you just keep that journal that you're able to even go back and keep yourself accountable with the Holy Spirit on where your choices are. And I think that you'll even see as you're going through that and making those kingdom choices that your journal is also going to begin to be filled with some really good things that are opened up in your life because you're clearing a path. You're getting rid of some junk in your life when you're making those kingdom choices. So thank you, Wendy. And when we're making those choices, you know, just coming down to nuts and bolts of it, you know, and and day-to-day living, it's choosing the good things, not bad, truth over lies, faith over Uh, fear, love over offense. God chose to love us. He chose to love us. It's who he is. Uh, Mercy over judgment, life over death, as we've talked about. God's way over my way. That's a big one. Uh, Belief over unbelief, forgiveness over bitterness. Uh, Choosing where I invest my time. I choose response, not reaction. We could do a whole show on response Mm -hmm. versus reaction. Uh, Humility over pride. Everything is choice. And uh, choosing to serve others well, choosing to smile or to frown. So many choices. (laughs) So many choices. So many choices even in how you respond to negative things that have happened to Mm -hmm. you. That choice choice puts power back in your court. And even though others may have made a choice that have impacted you negatively, you have a choice on how you respond and how you come up out of that and where you focus in it. And one will bring you life. It's so good, I love it. And a life full of healthy choices is gonna give you a good life. It's just awesome, it's just the way it works. Disastrous choices gives you what kind of a life? Disastrous. Disastrous, (laughs) yeah. I wanna explain uh, to all of you that are watching today, just in case that you are not aware of our Women in Ministry Network. And you know, when you're fulfilling your destiny, your God-given destiny, there's a place for you in this world to minister for him and through him to serve others so that we can expand the kingdom under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And many of you, you are doing just that Mm -hmm. in your sphere of influence. Maybe it's business, maybe it's family, maybe you're serving God as an intercessor, maybe you serve him as a worshiper, maybe you uh, serve him in evangelism as you're reaching out to those around you. Uh, Maybe you have a career that you're serving God in. All of these areas are places of service where we have set ourselves apart for the Lord and we do it with intentionality. And so we have gathered women together who are passionately in love with Jesus and who are committed to serving him. And we've uh, created a network called Women in Ministry Network, Women. And we would love to invite you if you feel called to serve the Lord in whatever realm of of, uh, ministry you are serving in, we would love to have you join us. It will empower you, give you other women who are uh, connected to serving God in the same way. Um, There is equipping, there's all kinds of opportunity for you. So I'd love to invite you to seek us out, search it out, and uh, to go to patriciaking.com. And on there, there is a tab for WIMN, Women in Ministry Network. Just click on that. It'll take you to our Women in Ministry Network page. There's lots of information there about the network and an application to join. We'd love to get you to know you better and that uh, perhaps we can all run together in these coming days, giving God the glory and advancing his kingdom together. I'll look forward to hearing from you on that. Um, I've got a decree to close out our topic today on choice. 
you will make wise choices unto life. You and your house will choose the Lord over all else. You will choose wisely because you continue to choose life. You and your children will live. Your steps will be made firm because you delight in the Lord and you choose him in all of your ways. That's it for today. Go and make good choices. <laughs>